Initiating crew among the uh, three. And the ball's in the air, swatted back and controlled by Michaela Smeltz. And we're underway on this Friday as the Panthers operate from our right to left. Purdue Fort Wayne, our left to right opposite view for those watching on ESPN+. Plus. Salam goes inside to Sydney Staver, draws a double team, goes back out to the free throw line jumper, rolls in for Emma Whitmerhouse. So Emma Whitmerhouse coming off her first double figure scoring performance since November 28th when she scored 12 points and lost on Saturday at IUPUI. Give the Panthers the initial lead. Purdue Fort Wayne sporting their way, Black Unis. Panthers with their home goal, ball in the hands of Shayla Sellers. Back up high. Solaris starts feeding the ball into the hands of Riley Ott. Ott coming in at 10.6 points a game, second best on the team. Looking inside, Ryan Ott going inside to Starks. And now left side, Riley Ott goes back out in a shot clock violation off the ball movement by Purdue Fort Wayne. Now besides Tim Daly, Jennifer Wasso, and Abby Burmeister also part of tonight's officiating crew. No question, the Mastodons live and die with that three-point shot. Again, 8.33 point makes the game third best in the Horizon League. And this is a team that only shot about 25% from downtown a year ago, but up to about 33% so far in their first now 15 plus games. 2 nothing Milwaukee, 8.50 on the first quarter clock. Michaela Santoro up high, Cindy Staver, shot clock winding down. Shot clock down to five, Staver attacks up the left side, had to deflect it away, ball knocked out of bounds, will stay with the Panthers. And three seconds on the shot clock. So knocked away with Jaslyn Limbo on the inside. She comes in with five blocks. It's tied for the team lead. Purdue Fort Wayne second to the bottom of the league in blocks. And it goes to Wallstead. Up to right side, there's a right-hander. Comes up short. And the rebound for Limbo, who's number two on the team in rebounding. Shayla Sellers into the hands of Riley Ott. Coach Reckless fields one of the key matchups to determine who will win this game. Here's the matchup at point guard between Riley Ott and Michaela Smeltzer. Sellers going left side. Bounce pass goes left side corner. Riley Ott had it deflected by Whitmerhouse. And the ball hit the ground in the late whistle. And finally, it's going to go against Emma Whitmerhouse. That's going to be her first and the first down the Panthers. So just missed out on what would have been her seventh block. And instead, Purdue Fort Wayne going to the free throw line. This is a massive downs team, much like the Panthers. They make their free throws. Third in the Horizon League, 20th in the nation. 77% collectively as Riley out hits the first. Third best free throw shooting in the league at 84%. That's one of the big keys too for the Panthers, trying to limit the number of free throw attempts to the opposition. Misses the second rebound deflected by Whitmore House into the hands of Michaela Smeltzer, but the opposition doing a great job last few games out shooting the Panthers at the charity strike. Two one Panthers, Smeltzer left side going right. Bounce pass, Staver right of the lane, and she walked with the basketball. Two minutes gone by here in the opening quarter, and so a traveling violation against Sydney Staver. Panthers doing a better job of taking care of the basketball as of late, with 11 and 13 turnovers, each last now couple of games. The second and third fewest turnover totals in a game this season for Milwaukee. A steal, layup, Schmelzer left it short, but draws a Purdue Fort Wayne foul. So the Panthers are able to get the ball right back, and that's what the Mastodons will do. They can force the turnover, but will also commit their fair share. And Schmelzer is able to attack and got bumped. And a foul against Riley Ott, her first. And team foul number one on the Mastodons. Michaela Schmelzer, 81% free throw shooter at 22 for 27. First down the way, splashing in. So the Panthers, they come in. First in the league, third in the nation at 80% from the free throw line collectively. Next on the way, good. So two for two goes Schmelzer, and the Panthers go up 4-1. 7.45 on the opening quarter clock. Feed goes right side, Sellers right of the lane, will dribble back out. Riley Ott gets the zone, Panther D. Expect the Panthers to play quite a bit of zone. Like the aggressiveness, the zone defense provided this past weekend, does Coach Recklitz. Floater short for Sellers, put back, goes right of the hoop. That for Jaslyn Limbo. 4-3 Panthers off the putback by Limbo. 7-20 left here in the first. Whitmer House up top, Schmelzer. Bounce pass, Wallstad right back, Schmelzer left wing, fires a three ball, long. Rebound tapped by Wallstad, deflected up by Shayla Sellers, and the Panthers will keep it. Panthers coming off a weekend in which 
They won at UIC 65-58 last Thursday, but then lost a tough one at IUPUI 63-60 on Saturday, despite leading for about three-fourths of the game. Smelter up top, Michaela Santoro. Left wing, Sydney Staver. Shot clock at 10. Panthers lead by one with the basketball. Smelter with seven to shoot. Defense by Riley Ott. Smelter trying to force her way left. Shot clock down to two. Goes inside, bounce pass picked off by Jaslyn Limbo. Panthers have done a pretty better job too offensively when it comes to moving that ball around. Up top with three ball, Ott short. And the rebound, put back up the left side, comes up short for Ryan Ott. Panthers come away with the rebound. We look at the assist totals, 16 and 17 of the last now couple of games, 17 match of the season best on uh, Saturday. Up the left side, shot won't go for Whitmer Ross on the up and under, but able to draw contact at a Purdue Fort Wayne foul. Panthers lead four to three. 626 left here in the opening quarter. Got clipped by Jaslyn Limbo. That's her first, and team foul two. Whitmer House demanded the ball on the inside. Some great touches, especially early last week from the jungle. Misses the first free throw off to the right. Missed her lone free throw attempt on Saturday. A 70% free throw shooter coming in at 14 to 20. Next free throw on the way. Good, nice adjustment. Splashes in. Panthers so far three for four from the free throw line. Lead five to three. And 6.20 left here in the first from Milwaukee. Happy to have you with us on this Friday. As the bounce pass, want to go the direction. And a limbo, but a traveling violation after Riley out with B double team. Ott will turn the ball over as many as 11 turnovers in the game, which came in an non-conference contest against Indiana State. A change for Purdue, Fort Wayne. We'll see Audra Emerson, a 5'7 freshman, playing her 14th game, coming off a career-high 17 points, showing in the comeback one on Saturday over Detroit Mercy. Left side corner, Staver. Left wing, Schmelzer swings it. Michaela Santoro. Panthers by a couple. Four minutes gone by here in the first. Santoro, left wing, Staver. Jacks a three. Hits the three. Sydney Staver shooting 21% from beyond the arc. Hits the uh, triple, and the Panthers extend their three-point streak to 592 consecutive games with a three-point make. 8-3, Panthers lead. Up top, Emerson playing the point, picked up on by Michaela Santoro. Limbo, left side, high hand Schmelzer. Flip goes to Solaris Starks, going inside. Up the pass out by Ryan Oppal being swung around, and now Starks to the elbow. Passing left side corner, and a three ball. High Archer to beat the shot clock, Budger is long for Sellers. Rebound goes into the Panther bench area. Out of bounds to Milwaukee. Shayla Sellers, one of their three point assassins, shooting a 35% from downtown. Comes in number two on the team in both three-point makes and attempts. Panthers lead eight to three. Near the halfway point here in this opening quarter. Schmelzer, right side corner of the baseline drive. Santoro pulls up her jumper, a short rebound is tapped baseline into the hands of Emerson. Into the front court for the Mastodons. Emerson picked up on by Santoro off the screen. Attempted to be set that by Starks. And the ball deflects off the table, off our microphone in front of us. Same five that started the game as play gets ready to resume. But so far, turnover is a story with three against the Mastodons and five points off those miscues for the Panthers. Ball knocked away by Smelter, but a little too aggressive. Knocking ball in the hands of Limbo. That's going to be team foul two on Milwaukee. It goes against Michaela Smelzer. That's her first. She came over to help out Michaela Santoro. Inbound into the backcourt to Aldra Emerson. Now right side, that with Cheyenne Johnson. Quick ball move back into the corner. That with Broman Schenkel, who's got the second longest name letter-wise in the Horizon League. Falling down Johnson, and then gets tied up by Megan Wallstad. She fell right into the arms of Megan Wallstad, and a jump ball whistle with the arrow benefiting the Mastodon's five seconds on the shot clock. Change here, we'll see Aubrey Stupp, a sophomore from Farmersville, Ohio, and among a total of six of 13 who played last year that are back in uniform for the Mastodons. He is out there playing for the 14th time. Coming off the bench for the fifth time after making a total of nine starts earlier. Inbound goes to Stupp. Shot clock down to three, down to two. Johnson goes to her left, doesn't see and realize the shot clock situation. 
going to be a shot clock violation, the second time already. A shot clock violation has gone against the Mastodons, who have not scored in the last three minutes and three seconds. So that zone defense being aggressive. That was certainly the story that the Panthers went to that zone defense this past road trip, being aggressive, being active. Causes a fit for Purdue Fort Wayne here in this opening quarter. Jaslyn Linbo is back on for the Mastodons. Schmelzer goes to her left, passes off to Emma Whitmer House. 8-3, Panthers by five. 4-13 to go here in the first. Daver left side three ball, good again. She has hit both of her three-point attempts so far in this opening quarter. And the Panthers go up 11-3. to Into the front court, Sellers. Left side corner, and Broman Schenkel, three ball, nothing but nets. A 28% three-point shooter. Just three points at a three ball on Saturday against Detroit Mercy. 11-6, Panthers. And a lengthy Mastodon scoring drought. That's only their second field goal making six tries. And that smells are miscommunicated with Whitmer House and Staver. Ball flies between the pair into the Mastodon's bench area. Out of bounds, Purdue Fort Wayne ball. Angie Sierra playing with a great deal of confidence. Made her season debut after battling injury early this season. Made her debut back on December 2nd at Youngstown State. Take a little bit of time to get up to speed, but man, did she look confident shooting that shot on the road against UIC and IUPUI this past weekend, which included a career high of 14 points in the win against UIC. Left wing stop, ball being worked around the perimeter. Right back into the hands of Emerson. Her three ball goes flat into the left. Rebound tracked down by Michaela Schmelzer. 11-6, Panthers by five. 3.15 to go here in the opening quarter. Schmelzer on over to Angie Sierra. Sierra going left, will pass it off to Whitmer House. Taking a baseline right, drive and kick. Schmelzer swings it left wing, Staver bypassing the three. Now will drive and pass it back into the corner. Three ball is an air ball for Schmelzer. Battle for the rebound and somehow bounce back out. That's Angie Sierra by way of Staver and Sierra. Desperation three ball at the shot clock buzzer going off with the fuck off the top of the backboard and a shot clock violation. Whistled against Milwaukee. The Panthers were able to keep the attack alive thanks to Sydney Staver, who somehow was able to get a high bounce pass out despite the fact that she was on the basketball court battling for that board. The Panthers have been doing a great job when it comes to offensive rebounding. They come in right now ranked second in the league when it comes to offensive rebounds per game. Quick jumper, baseline left, no good for Limbo. Rebound Angie Sierra back into the front court. Michaela Smelter lob goes right side, low block. Whitmer House against the double team. Into the paint, a little up and under, and she walked with the ball in the painted area. Kendall Need will sub into the Milwaukee five. Out goes Staver. So a travel against Whitmer House trying to force the issue against about two or three that were in the painted area for Purdue Fort Wayne. And now Whitmer House being replaced by Macy McGlone in the Panther five. And so the Panthers go with Smelter, Sierra. Need Wallstad and McGlone. 2.25 left here in the first. Panthers lead by five. Sellers swings it left side corner and Broman Schenkel. Three ball is good. So she comes in and knocks down her first couple of three point attempts. And all of a sudden, Purdue Fort Wayne back to within two at 11 to 9. They have the ability to shoot their way back into many games with that three point shot. Angie Sierra at the Schmelzer, high, low, Walsh at a right side, low block with the left hand, goes wide left, rebound to flex out, and Sellers battling with McGlone, ball goes into the Purdue Fort Wayne bench area, out of bounds off of Shayla Sellers. An attempt by Walstad, her second 0 for 2 start to this one after coming off the 20 point, 13 rebound, fourth double double of the year performance on Saturday. McGlone. Up top, Wallstad, shot clock inside of 10. To the elbow, back out, Smelzer, top of the key, straight on three ball, off to the right. Rebound, McGlone able to track it down, battling there against Limbo, and then Limbo and McGlone get tangled up. Down went McGlone, down went Limbo, foul against Limbo. That's gonna be her second, and team foul number three. Limbo was on the ground trying to avoid getting stepped on. After Aubrey stop a plot from that pressure to Macy McGlone, and McGlone tripped over the fall in Jaslyn Limbo. 144 left here in the opening quarter. Panthers lead 11 to 9. Panthers shooting three at 10 from the field. Purdue Fort Wayne three at nine. They scored the last six thanks to a couple of three balls by Amelia Broman Schenkel. 
Skip pass goes to Angie Sierra, right wing. Dribbles back out. Now goes to her left off the screen set by McGlone. Top of the free throw line circle. Jumper goes for Angie Sierra. This past weekend averaged 11 points, two rebounds, one assist, and one and a half steals per game in those captains boosting performances. On the baseline drive, Roman Schenkel high pass flies over the reach of Shayla, sells in the left side corner, out of bounds, Panther ball. Panthers 13, Purdue Fort Wayne 9. One at 19 left here in the first, that being turnover number five on the Mastodons. Five turnovers so far for Milwaukee. Eight, three Panthers and points off those miscues. Up top, Angie Sierra goes to her left, finds Wallstad. Right wing Schmelzer, and before the pass could find Need, an offensive foul away from the ball against Macy McGlone. McGlone pick up what's going to be her first, and for the Panthers, team foul three. So both teams have three team fouls with 65 seconds left here in the first. Purdue Fort Wayne ball, they come in averaging 59.4 points a game, eighth among 12 in the Ryzen League, shooting 38% from the field. Broman Schenkel off the pass that finds Emerson. Right back to Broman Schenkel, left wing, right back to Emerson. Swings it right side corner. The fuck out of the bounce though by Kendall Lee. She jumped the passing lane. Denying the corner pass for Solaris Starks. Solaris Starks with five and two point performance last year against the Panthers as a member of Detroit Mercy. Gets the inbound pass. Starks into the hands of Sellers. Right side three ball counted. Shayla Sellers. She went one for five from downtown, three of seven from the field, scoring seven points on Saturday against Detroit Mercy. Brings the Mastodons back to within one at 13 to 12. Purdue Fort Wayne, three for six from three point range. And they went 11 of 31 in the comeback against Detroit Mercy. Went 0 for five from downtown. Schmelzer, Need, finds the backdoor cutting. Schmelzer would have deflected out off of. Schmelzer, all kinds of congestion between Need and Schmelzer. Out of bounds, Mastodon's ball. Final 10 seconds here in the first. Shot clock goes dark. Emerson into the hands of Sellers. Goes to her left, right back to Emerson. Right wing fires a three. Skips out, rebound McGlone. And the ball up by as many as eight. At one point, a seven nothing Panther run. Also at one point in that first quarter, a six nothing run for Purdue Fort Wayne. Panthers ball to begin this second quarter to our left. Opposite view for those watching our simulcast on ESPN+. Plus. Panthers with their home gold, and Purdue Fort Wayne, their away black, and a foul here against the Mastodons. To start things off, an arm bar against Riley Ott. That's gonna be her second, and team foul one, so a blow here for the Mastodons. And after she was limited in that opening quarter to three minutes and 42 seconds, the team's number two score heads back to the bench being replaced by Aldra Emerson. Inbound goes to Angie Sierra out there with McGlone, Need, Wallstadt, and Schmelzer. Need, right side corner, taking a baseline right. And as she was driving, was going up, missed the shot, but draws a Purdue Fort Wayne foul. So Kendall Need taking a baseline against Amelia Bromenschenkel. And Bromenschenkel picked up her first team foul too as Whitmer House replaces Wallstadt and the Panther five. And now Ryan Ott, a two-time Horizon League freshman of the week, receiving those honors each of the first two weeks of the season back on November 15th and the 22nd, replacing Broman Schenkel. Need 87% free throw shooter at seven of eight, knocks down the first. Mentioned back in the first, Broman Schenkel has the second longest last name in the Horizon League, 21 letters, surpassed only by UIC's Tamara Fernilier Adedeco. We've got the hyphen name. 24 letters for her last name. Did not play against the Panthers last week. Both free throws fall for Need now. A deflected pass off the press. Smells for the steal. Layup the right side goes. So the Panthers put on the press, deflecting the inbound. And Smeltzer with a layup. So a four point sequence off the free throws and the steal and layup by Smeltzer. 17 12. Panthers by five. Quickly down the other end. Three ball right side corner. No good for Aubrey Stupp. Rebound from Macy McGlone. On the push by Smeltzer. Up the left side, Kendall Need. Need slowing down the Temple, passing back in the corner to Angie Sierra. High low, McGlone left the loop, catching, goes up, left the shot short. Macy McGlone lost the rebound, out of bounds, last touched by Purdue Fort Wayne, knocked to the bounce by Ryan Ox. To the Panthers, a couple of free throws by Kendall Need. A steal off the inbound, got a layup by Schmelzer. And Purdue Fort Wayne's with a three ball in transition, but stuck on the miss. Whitmerhouse attacking, no, loose ball, the 
Plucked and picked up by Macy. McClellan goes up and under, lays it in, and gives the Panthers a 19 to 12 advantage. Panthers have scored the first six points here in the second. Pass goes into the hands of Stubb. Now with Starks driving right. Starks so far limited a, a single shot attempt in this first half. Speaking of shot attempts, a three ball comes up short for Stubb. Has missed back to back ball, bounces out into the Panther bench, and Milwaukee will take over. Jada Donaldson, Sydney Staver, and Michaela Santoro into the Panther lineup. Jada Donaldson played on Saturday at IUPUI. It was her first appearance since the Northwestern game back on the 14th of December. And this Panther team is at, if not near 100% health, all 13 active here on this Friday. 11 of the 12 on the Purdue-Fort Wayne roster are active. The exception being Margot Thompson, who has only played one game this season. That was back on December 12th at Notre Dame. Ball lost by Michaela Santoro. It was knocked out by Aldra Emerson, and the Panthers will keep it with 19 seconds on the shot clock. A substitution will see Jaslyn Limbo back on for the Mastodons, replacing Aubrey Stupp, who in this game has gone over a two with Back-to-back -back possessions of three-point misses. Inbound, right side, low block. Donaldson lost it in the low block area. Then gets tied up as she was being flanked by a couple of Mastodons. Shayla Sells getting a hand of the ball, forcing the jump ball. Arrow benefiting Purdue-Fort Wayne. 8-16 left here in the second. Panthers lead by seven at 19-12. And so far, we've outscored Purdue-Fort Wayne. 6-0 here in this second quarter. Sellers with back-to-back double-double performances earlier this season against UIC and against Evansville will pass it off to Limbo into the hands of Ryan Ott. Ott attacking up the left side. Scoop layup is strong off the backboard, off the lip of the rim. Rebound lost by Limbo, lost by Ott, and then overcomes Whitmerhaus, and all three have a hand on the basketball with a jump ball whistled, arrow benefiting the Panthers. So a scoop layup that was missed on the attack by Ryan Ott. And then Limbo, Whitmerhaus, and Ott all getting tangled up for the jump ball whistle. 19-12, Panthers up by seven. 7.48 to go first quarter here in Milwaukee. Whitmer House, left side corner, Michaela Santoro, an offensive foul is gonna go against Sydney Staver. With the set the screen, and Staver picks up what's gonna be her first, and for the Panthers, team foul number one. Purdue Fort Wayne will take over. This is a Mastodons team that took full advantage of being in Milwaukee these last couple of days. Went to the Bucks golden State Warriors game last night. It was a a team gift, a holiday gift, the tickets to the game. Set upstairs, Pfizer for him last night, watching the Bucks blow out Golden State. Right wing three ball, Sellers hits it, and the spacing, able to knock down her second three of the game. Four for 10 now with the Mastodons Downs in three point shooting. They're down by four at 19 to 15. 7 13 left here in the second. Whitmer House going left side corner, Jada Donaldson. Donaldson up high, Macy McGlone right back to Donaldson. High low, Whitmer House with the pass it back out, got the fuck away, recovered by Staver. Six and zags away around the defense, will walk with the basketball. She was gliding through on the weave around a couple of Purdue Fort Wayne defenders. Megan Wallstad will sub in replacing Macy McGlone in the Panther lineup. Megan Wallstad tops on the team in scoring and rebounding coming in. So far is 0 for 2 from the field with one rebound. Her 13.7 points per game average is eighth best in the league, also fifth in the league, shooting 45% from the field. So looking to get her going here in this second quarter. Sellers with Purdue Fort Wayne down by four. Up high, Ryan Ott attacking, goes up a floor that banks in. Tough shot for Ryan Ott. When her first collegiate season is tied for third on the team at 9.1 points a game. Two point Panther lead. And Donaldson tripped up. A Purdue Fort Wayne foul with 6.26 left in the second quarter. Foul goes against Aldra Emerson. Her first inbound from the end line to our left. Is to be triggered by Sydney Staver. 21 of the shot clock. Inbound high hands by Solaire starts in the defense. Santoro baseline right back out. Staver up top. She'll launch a three. Short. Rebound flies into the hands of that of Jaslyn Limbo. Sellers across the timeline, up the wing. Able to find Emerson, right back to Sellers, swings it left wing. Ott for three. That comes up short. 
Last five games, she has attempted a three. She has failed to convert. She's gone 0 for 10 as Ryan Ott from three-point range over the last five games. And now, Broman Shankle in replacing. Starks the rebound, the bucks on the bounce back to Purdue Fort Wayne. Michaela Smelter back into the Panther five, replacing Jada Donaldson. In fact, Ryan Ott, her last three-point field goal make, November 24th against Evansville. Inbound from the end line for Emerson. Up top it goes to Broman Shankle. Goes to her left, around the screen set by Limbo. Attacks the bucket, high off the glass, can't get the roll. Rebound knocked to the bounce, last touch by Limbo. Panther ball. 19-17, Milwaukee up by two. And 5.58 to go here in the second. Right now the Panthers a two minute 55 second scoring drop now. An offensive foul against Michaela Smeltzer, who dribbled right into the defensive. Pressure of Shayla Sellers. Sellers goes down. Second on Smeltzer, team foul two. For the Panthers, their fourth turnover in the last two minutes and 59 seconds. That coincides with the scoring drought. 11th Panther turnover. And so far, Purdue Fort Wayne has not been able to take greater advantage. They've only scored six points off the previous 10 miscues. Right now, the conversation between Abby Burmeister and Tim Daly is the shot clock, which has been set to 30. It was at 20 a second ago. And that was a lost possession by Milwaukee. Inbound goes into the backcourt to Audra Emerson. Defense Jada Donaldson back out there, replacing Smelter in foul trouble. Panthers going back, zone defense. Sellers to her right, bounce pass. Limbo bounces her way into the painted area, throws up a underhand shot over Wallstead. It comes up short. Wallstead coming in, she is second of the in the Horizon League in total blocks. She is also fifth in the league in blocks per game. But no block there, but Stuart Presence contesting the attempt there by Limbo. Santoro goes to her left, falls down, get the, gets the bounce pass out to Wallstad. In the corner, Donaldson. Panthers by two, stay her left wing. Shot clock down to seven. Santoro goes to her right, stopping, shooting, and missing from 16. Rebound for Emerson, and the scoring drop now at three minutes and 43 seconds for the Panthers. And now Santoro jumping the pass, able to pick it off, but then stepped to the bounce, trying to maintain her balance along the sideline. Jumping the pass, jumping in front of Amelia Bromenschenkel. Out of bounds, Purdue Fort Wayne ball. So Santoro stole it, but then she was nearing the sideline, put on a balance act, lost her balance, out of bounds. So Mass down to recover with 5.01 to go here in the second right now. The shot clock reached 30, and they will say that Right now they're trying to figure out if Santoro actually had possession or not. They say she did not, and so the shot clock is down to 23 for Purdue Fort Wayne. Two point Panther lead, 19-17. So far the Panthers shooting 35% from the field, Purdue Fort Wayne at 32, but way too many first half Panther turnovers. Ryan out to her left. Goes back into the corner. Broman Shankle, baseline left, goes top of the key. Straight on, deep three, Emerson. Around and out, rebound for Whitmer House. Panthers are up right now, 12 on the glass, 19 to seven. They have dominated the rebounding. Turnovers though, 11 to six, Panthers plus five. Santoro, back out, wall stayed up high. She'll launch a three, that won't go down. Skips out, rebound for Limbo. And Milwaukee now two of seven from three-point range after finishing four of 11 from deep from the jungle on Saturday. Sellers to her right, attacking over Whitmer House and scores the bucket. Off the attack by Shayla Sellers, who is tied for third on the team and scoring and has seen her offensive production increase every year she's been on the Mastodon's roster. Tying the game at 19. Left elbow jumper is short for Donaldson. Rebound is hauled in by Sellers. And Purdue Fort Wayne with an opportunity to take their first lead of the night in a game that has seen Milwaukee play with a lead as great as eight. Off the attack, Sellers banks it in, and there's Purdue Fort Wayne's first lead of the night at 21-19 after they had created the first tie of the night at 19. Sellers back-to-back -back buckets, 3.35 left, second quarter. And Sellers has 10 points. She is back in double figures for the seventh time this season. Off the attack of the rack, layup short for Santoro. Rebound, Wallstead back out to Santoro. Left wing, three ball, bucket for Sydney Staver. Three for four from beyond the arc and a lengthy four plus minute Panthers scoring drought. 22 21. Panthers lead by a point. Much needed bucket there for Staver and company. 
Now looking for the defense to step it up. Ryan at turns, got Fort Wayne. And waiting to see. As Tim Daly talking with the clock operator right now. And the shot clock's gonna read 23. But the game clock reads 257. Okay. So it took seven seconds to get up the floor. And the Panthers have Kendall Need, Angie Sierra, Jada Donaldson, Sydney Staver, and Megan Wallstead currently on the floor. Inbound side court for Megan Wallstead. Panthers down a point. Inbound into the backcourt to Jada Donaldson, who's playing some lengthier minutes here in this first half with a couple of fouls against Michaela Schmelzer. Angie Sierra, a couple of jab steps, finds Kendall Need on the pass. Right wing, Sydney Stavers, will off another three ball. That's going to go long. And the rebound, knocked away by Angie Sierra. And Need went to, well, make that Donaldson went to pick it up from her knees, sliding over, and got tied up by Ryan Ott, who's going to be Purdue Fort Wayne ball. Need was getting back to play defense before quickly getting back onto the offensive side of the floor. 2.38 till halftime, and a 23-22, Mastodon's lead. Going inside, stop, back out, starts on the drive, walk with the ball. This Purdue Fort Wayne team, they have lost 23 consecutive true road games. They technically have a true road victory this season, but it was a forfeited win, so they didn't actually play the game. They have lost 23 consecutive road games they have played in, and they've gone three and 83 in two road games since 2015-16. Three balls off the mark for Angie Sierra. Eden with the track down the rebound, but goes into the Purdue Fort Wayne bench area. It's out of bounds to the Mastodons. Trying to end that streak tonight are the Mastodons who have not won a true road game since January 26th of 2020, back when they were a member of the Summit League, winning at Omaha 58 to 57. 0 and 12 in true road games last year in their Inaugural Horizon League sees it. Ball knocked away by Donaldson, who dives after it, able to take it away. Need gets the lead feed. Her layup with the left hand takes in. Great steal, great hustle by Jada Donaldson, able to dive after the loose basketball. Found Need, who is flying into the front court, gets the fast break layup, and the Panthers go up by one. 24 23. Inside up the left side. High floater, nothing but net for Ryan Ott. 25-24, Mastodons. 1.35 to go here in the second quarter. Angie Sierra, right side corner, launches a three. It's good! A three ball for Angie Sierra. As mentioned, shooting with a great deal of confidence. Well, coming in at 27% from downtown. Now a Panther takeaway. 27-25, Panthers lead. Staver up high. Now jab step and drive up the right side of it, deflected away and knocked out. That was off of Ryan Ott. Amelia Romanschenkel back in for Purdue Fort Wayne replacing Solaire Starks. So both of these teams, you have Starks and Walston who lead their respective programs in scoring and those two have combined to go 0 for 3 from the field. Neither one has scored for the respective team. In fact, Walston's the only one that's taken shots. Starks hasn't even attempted a field goal yet. Sierra going inside, Walstad. Back out, Need to launch a three ball, short, and now a loose ball foul against Milwaukee. That's gonna go against Sydney Staver. And Staver picks up what's gonna be her second, and team foul four. So Staver along with Schmelzer have two fouls apiece. Kayla Santoro again taking Staver's spot. Right now it is Sellers with Riley Ott back out. There's been limited by a couple of personal fouls with her sister Ryan Ott on the floor along with Amelia broman Shankle. Also right now in for the Mastodons, you have Aubrey Stupp. They have the ball trailing by two. 40 seconds left, second quarter. Baseline left drive and kick, deflected it out. And on the pass by Riley Ott looking to feed the ball to Sellers in front of the Panther bench, but it was deflected out. Inbound here for Riley Ott. Shot clock reads 16. Ott launches up top to Ryan Ott, deflected. That by Kendall Lee to her back turn to the inbounder. The foot off her back, so she turned to find the loose basketball and she got knocked down to the ground. And he masked down foul. That's gonna go against 
Aubrey Stapu came, came over trying to take it away from Need. Her first team foul for as Michaela Smeltzer is back into the Panther lineup replacing Jada Donaldson. 34.1 second. That's what's left. 34.1 and counting here in this second quarter and a 27-25 Panther lead. They're up by one after one. They've outscored the Madison down 14-13 so far in this second. Smeltzer picked up on by Emerson. Goes to her left, now to her right on the box, pass to Need. And Need over to Sierra. Get the pass right back from Smeltzer. Sierra with three, with two, up top Santoro. Off the back iron with the shot clock buzzer going off on her three point miss. Rebound for Ryan Ott, Ott down. So both teams going back to their starting five as the Panthers have the opening possession of this third. They operate from our left to right. Purdue Fort Winner right to left. Opposite view for those watching the simulcast on ESPN+. Plus. Wallstad, right elbow, looking for her first points of the game. Right side low block, goes back out, smells the right wing, bypassing the three as the defender, Limbo, jumps out at her. Wallstad will fire it, make it a long two, comes up short. Staver wants to make the save, along with Whitmerhouse, and both come up empty. As they both fly toward the cheerleaders on the baseline to our right. Out of bounds, masked down ball. Again, a very competitive second quarter that featured a couple of ties, six lead changes. Biggest lead for Purdue, Fort Wayne, two. Biggest Panther lead has been eight. Riley Ott into the hands of Sellers. Goes to her right against the Panther zone D. Limbo into the paint up the right side. Passing it back out, through it away from Sellers who will see it bounce out of bounds to the court side seats. Panthers will take over. Panthers trying to jump start the offense. Right now, shooting around 31% from the field. They shoot about 36% on the year, which is dead last in the league. Averaging 58.1 points a game, which is ninth among 12 in the Horizon League. Staver into the corner, smelts are open. Will fire a three, rims off. Rebound, Limbo, and Limbo bring down her fifth rebound. Left side corner, Riley Ott, back out, Sellers. Three ball from the wing, left side, no. Long rebound, brought in here, off the hustle by Riley Ott. Sellers. Attacking, passing left side corner. Three ball, no good off the mark for Ryan Ott. Another rebound, and back up the left hand shot short for Limbo. And the loose ball on the ground picked up by Michaela Schmelzer. On the push, left side corner, Staver. Ball fake on the three. Santoro. Driving right, pass goes right side corner. Whitmerhouse fires a three, it's good. Great to see her knock down a triple, she came in. One for 15 from downtown, part of that make. Well, her second three of the year. 30 to 25, and out on the inside layup, up the left side, gold for Jasmine Limbo. Quick entry at feed for Purdue Fort Wayne. Has them back to within three at 30 to 27, with two minutes gone by, third quarter. Panthers have hit four threes in the game. Purdue Fort Wayne has hit four threes in the game. You're okay with that if you're Milwaukee, considering again, the Master Dodge will live and die with that three point shot. Wallstad to Staver up top. Goes right. And now Staver to her left to the free throw line. Pass to the back out to Smelter. Shot clock down to two. Smelter step back. Three ball. Hits it to beat the shot clock buzzer over the wingspan of the hand of Riley out there defensively. Michaela Smelter giving the Panthers a 33 27 lead. Right side, three ball. Riley Ott comes up short. And the rebound into the hands of Limbo. Another reload here for Purdue Fort Wayne. This team coming in ninth among 12 in the Horizon League and rebounding at the break. The Panthers were already up 11 on the glass at 23 to 12. Jumper from 14 is short for Starks. That's her first field goal attempt of the game. Another offensive board. And now Ryan Ott attacking those of a floater and scores. Third time the charm. Three looks during that sequence. And Purdue Fort Wayne's back to within four at 33, 29. 6.55 to go in this third. Smeltzer looking to take a baseline. Draws a foul here. He's going to go against Solaire Starks. And Starks picked up her first, and team foul one against the Mastodons. 6.52. That's what's left here in the third. Inbound from the end line, Santoro finding Staver on the bounce pass. Wallstead going across the way to Whitmer House. Now high, low, Wallstead left to the hoop, turns into the painted area, with the right hand up the right side after a shot short. It's fouled by Sellers. That's gonna be her first, and team foul Number two. So the Panthers trying to get that ball on the inside. 
And halftime had a total of six points in the paint. Wallstead at the line. On the year is a 90% free throw shooter at 29 to 32. Able to knock in the first. That for Wallstead, her first point of the night. Second free throw also good. Panthers now seven of eight from the free throw line. 35-29, Milwaukee in the ball. Thrown away by Purdue Fort Wayne. They throw the ball away. And now a change here is going to see Aldra Emerson replace Riley Ott. So a couple of timely threes. A couple of defensive stops, or at least turnovers here by Purdue Fort Wayne. Well, back on the inside of the Panthers, they built themselves a 35-29 lead. Walls up the right side, deflected away. Contact, and we have a Mastodon foul. That's going to go against Aldra Emerson. So the Panthers being aggressive on the inside. And seeing the foul follow, Wallstad able to go up strong after Limbo came over to help out. And so more free throws here for Megan Wallstead off the second foul against Emerson. Team foul three, and the first free throw rattles in. With that free throw, Panthers go up 36-29. A chance to match their biggest league of the game with a free throw make here, and Wallstead drains it to make it 37 -29. 29. So the eight point lead match in the biggest of the night for Milwaukee. 6.23 left, third quarter. Sellers, defense Santoro. Going right side. Back into the hands of Ryan Ott. Ott to her left and starts with a quick pass. Limbo going right back out. And now starts left wing three ball, air ball, too strong. Getting the pass there from Ryan Ott. And the ball flies out of bounds back to the Panthers. So a miss there. 37-29. Panthers now with the opportunity to take a, their biggest lead of the game right here, which still four minutes gone by in this third quarter. Wallstead baseline right. Back to Schmelzer. Santoro up high. Goes to her right on the attack. Pulls up from 15 for the free throw. And her jumper bounces in. And all of a sudden, the Panthers now lead 39-27. Game clock at 537 off the Master Downs timeout with doubles in media. Inbound goes to Emerson. Picked up on by Michaela Schmelzer. So the Panthers right now with momentum up by 10. Their biggest lead of the game. Right elbow, Limbo. Her jumper in from 15. She's around 53% from the field, averaging 4.5 points a game. Makes it 39-31 inside. Wofton right of the hoop over a double team. Got hammered on the backside by Limbo. Came over to help out Sellers. So the Panthers trying to establish the inside game. Having a tough time doing so on a regular basis in the first half, but a little more success and not only getting the ball inside to Wallstead, but also Wallstead earning trips to the free throw line. And we'll get our fifth and sixth free throw attempts of this quarter right here. Second foul against Sellers, team foul four. And the first free throw for Wallstead is good. She has five points on five free throw makes. Panthers 10 up 11 from the free throw line. Purdue Fort Wayne at three of four. Next on the way, also through the netting. And so the Panthers go back up by 10 at 41-31. Sellers going back right side, Emerson into the front court. Ball goes into the corner, right side, three ball, clunking short for Ryan Ott, who still has not made a three ball since November the 24th. She's 0 for 3 from downtown to this one. Michaela Santoro up high, Schmelzer passing Santoro right side, fires a three. Around and out, rebound, track down, down by Emerson. She'll come the other way for Purdue Fort Wayne. 10 point Milwaukee lead, 4.45 to go third quarter. Pass goes to Limbo, right back to Sellers, left wing as the spacing launches a three ball, cannot give her spacing as she rattles in the triple. Shayla Sellers has just enough room to work with, able to drain the three, has hit as many as five threes in the game this season, has three in this one. It's 41 34, Panthers. Hook shot, Whitmer House goes down. She turned into the paint of the area, threw up the right-hander. 43-34, Panthers, Whitmer House now with eight. 4-13 left here in the third. Sellers, who has 13 points, is at three threes. Her high is 23 against UIC, which went five of six from three-point range. That was a massive down to victory. Up top, Sellers again for three. Nothing but net. 
And Shayla Sellers, whose dad played in the NBA with Chicago, Seattle, Minnesota, and Detroit from 1986 through 1993, has hit back-to-back -back trays and brings the Mastodon back to within six at 43-37. Smells her top of the key triple, flat to the left on the rebound for Limbo. Sellers into the front court, hustling down the floor, and then Santor Riley Ott and Jaslyn Limbo. So the Panthers so far a balanced attack. They have seen five players score between five and nine points. Staver leads the way with nine thanks to three threes. Entry feed, Limbo walk with the ball as she was making her way into the paint of the area against Megan Wallstad. For Purdue Fort Wayne, they've been paced by 16 points for Shayla Sellers. She's among five who have scored for the Mastodons. Eight rebounds so far for Jaslyn Limbo. That matches her high now done three times this season. Away from the ball, we have a foul here that's gonna go against the Mastodons. That's gonna be team foul. Well, maybe not, we have a clock situation. So Houston, a whistle and a foul to foul. It's gonna be a, another clock situation. The shot clock never started. So that's happened a couple of times, but the Mastodons are right back in this game thanks to the play of Shayla Sellers. Inbound goes to Smeltzer. Bounce pass goes to Wallstad. Wallstad into the corner, Donaldson. Right back, the direction of Wallstad. So a couple of point guards out there with Smeltzer and Donaldson. Shot clock inside of 10. Smeltzer attacking right now, backpedaling. Bounce pass on a fine. Wallstad is knocked away. Limbo and Wallstad and a jump ball. Inbound, jumping jack defensive pressure from Emerson and it goes to Smeltzer. Well now they Okay, so the shot clock at three. And now they apparently say that Purdue Fort Wayne had possession. Sierra going inside, picked off by Riley out. That was the confusion. So they had three on the shot clock, but they say Purdue Fort Wayne had possession before the jump ball occurred. Therefore, a fresh 30 for the Panthers. Doesn't matter now, the Mastodon's attacking to the bucket layup. Too strong for Riley Ott. Milwaukee rebound. Donaldson, back out Schmelzer, swings it, Angie Sierra. Need around the screen set by Wallstad, pulls up from the free throw on her 15 foot jumper is down. Kendall Need with that bucket makes it 45-37 Panthers. She has scored six points on two for four shooting. 153 left here in the third. Right side Emerson to Limbo. Up top, Sellers. Sellers going to right. Flip goes into the hands of Emerson. Up top, she'll launch a three ball. Off to the left, long rebound, Angie Sierra. Up the wing, Michaela Smelter on the Panther push. Smelter lobbing it inside. Wallstead turns, passes off to Donaldson. Back out left wing, Kendall Need. Need, back left wing, Donaldson top of the key. Smelter swings it right side corner, Angie Sierra. 120 left here in the third. Wallstad, an offensive foul away from the ball is going to go against Angie Sierra. She went to post up on the inside. Apparently used the elbow to create some spacing. That's going to be her first, and the Panthers' first team foul. 118 to go here in the third. Starks back in for Purdue, Fort Wayne. She came in at 12.1 points a game, 12 best in the Horizon League. Well, she's only attempted, but a couple of field goals missing both with a three point miss. Two assists and one foul, her stat line. Up top, Riley Ott to her right will find Sellers. Right back to Ott attacking left with the left hand. High off the uh, high and down it goes. That for Riley Ott. Looking to use the backboard, but didn't need, didn't need to. Went nothing but net. Do it straight up there and it came straight down. Nothing but net for Ott. Donaldson driving, kick into the corner, need. Dumping it off, Schmelzer back, Wallstead swings it, Donaldson picks up her dribble, 43 seconds left here in the third, Panthers lead 45-39. Schmelzer with seven of the shot clock, goes to her right. Now stops and passes up high, Need going inside, Wallstead in front of the hoop, up the right side with the layup, no, missed it, brings out her own miss, goes back up, and gets the roll, plus the foul! Wallstead missed her initial attempt up the right side of the hoop, brought down her own miss, went back up, contact and a foul, and a right-hander around and it rolled in. The second effort rolled in, and for Wallstad, third foul is gonna go against Jaslyn Limbo, and now a three-point possibility. That's her first field goal make of the night, and for Wallstad, now one of six from the field. 
as Michaela Santoro and Sydney Staver each back into the uh, Panthers lineup. And McClone get ready to sub in. That for Wallstad, whose free throw's on its way and left it short. She rushed it. 25 seconds left here in the third. 47-39 Panthers up by eight. Riley Ott up top. Flies over the shoulder of Broman Shankle, but able to recover. She's back out there for Purdue, Fort Wayne, and now Sellers with the shot clock turned off. Final eight seconds. Sellers attacking right side over Wallstead, who contested the shot. Really up attempt came up short, and then Angie Sierra brings down the rebound. Gets fouled with 4.7 seconds left here in the third. It's a bonus. And Milwaukee walking length of the floor for free throws. Fourth foul on Limbo, who has been disqualified once this season, which came at Notre Dame. Macy McGlone subs in, replacing Megan Wallstad. And now for Purdue Fort Wayne, Aubrey Stupp replacing Limbo. Certainly sides the advantage to Milwaukee here tonight. And a big blow here with Limbo at 6-2. In serious foul trouble to the bench. So Angie Sear at the free throw line. Her first on the way, off the back rim, flies out. 61% free throw, sure, 8 of 13. 4.7 left here in the third. Panthers up by eight, up by as many as 10 in this third quarter. And the next free throw on its way and splashing through. Angie Sierra with six points to go along with three rebounds. Right to left, out up the wing, a deep three. Baker too strong for, to the fourth we go. Inbound goes to Riley out as Purdue Fort Wayne has the first possession. Panthers looking for a strong fourth quarter. They've had some tough fourth quarter performances as of late. Purdue Fort Wayne coming off a strong fourth quarter in their comeback one against Detroit Mercy this past weekend. Sellers attacking, throws up a running one-hander, left it short, and the rebound found by Broman Schenkel. Right back out with Stupp, up top with Riley Ott. Fakes right, goes left, gets a step up on Schmelzer, goes for a layup, and it banks in. Will he get the continuation? Will he give it to her or not? That right now is the question. As Riley Ott was able to fake one way and go the other and beat Schmelzer off the dribble. Got bumped, continued to the bucket, and her layup banked on in. They give her the continuation. So it's an and one. That for Riley Ott. As Schmelzer picks up her third, and team foul one. Riley Ott, third best free throw shooting the league at 84%. One for two in this game. Panthers in that game against IUPUI. Uh, Sander is the free throw on its way. Clunks off the right, no good. Rebound Macy McGlone. Panthers were outscored 16-11 and shot five of 17 from the field in that loss against the uh, Jaguars after leading for more than three-fourths of the game. McGlone going inside, Staver. Turns up the right side, and it blocked and knocked away by Sellers. Loose ball picked up by Starks. Into the front court for Purdue, Fort Wayne. Driving kick right side corner. Three ball, short out of the hands of Broman Schenkel. Rebound for Sydney Staver. 48-41 Panthers. Minute gone by here in the fourth. Staver up top, bypassing the three. We'll hand it off instead to Michaela Schmelzer. Now on Saturday, Purdue, Fort Wayne outscored Detroit Mercy 23-12, overcoming a 10-point deficit. Now an offensive foul away from the ball is going to go against Michaela Santoro. That's going to be... Her first, and now two fouls against the Panthers. Milwaukee's actually plus 10 in free throw attempts in this game, which is a, a sight to see considering this Panthers squad has given up way too many free throws over the last three games or so to the opposition. Stump finds the cutting. Ott up and under with the right hand able to score. Riley Ott, nice find. Aubrey Stump able to catch her in stride in front of the defense. And Riley Ott has brought Purdue Fort Wayne back to within five and 48 to 43. Santoro into the paint. Bounce pass, baseline left. As Sierra goes back out to Staver, back to Santoro. High pass, right side, low block. McGlone had knocked out of her possession by Riley Ott, out of bounds. It's gonna be Panther ball. Megan Wallstead back in for Milwaukee, replacing Macy McGlone, who has a bloody nose. Inbound coming up from the end line with 12 seconds of the shot clock for the Panthers. It's for Angie Sierra. Well, they say no blood, no foul. Well, I don't know. Macy McGlone got hit in the face, it appeared. She was bleeding. 
And the question is, who saw what? And two out of the three officials come together and apparently nobody saw anything. See if they go to the monitor to see if anything aggressive occurred down low at that high low pass. And apparently they won't even go to the monitor to check it out. So nobody saw anything or they saw that it was, in their estimation, inadvertent. So an inbound goes to Cindy Staver. Left wing Schmelzer, five point Panther lead, 8 10 to go. Smells will take the baseline. Back into the corner, Santoro. Three ball, kaboom! A three ball knocked down by Michaela Santoro. That is her second field goal make of the game. She has five points. Panther lead 51 43. They fit seven threes. Right now, beating Purdue four went at their own game. The Mastodons have hit six triples. Riley Ott, back out. Top of the key, three ball. Off to the right, no good for Stupp. Rebound, Angie Sierra. Leads it ahead to Smeltzer. Smells are on back, Sydney Staver, left wing, lets the defender zip by before she attacks, goes into the paint, going to force her way through a couple to knock away by Sellers, out of bounds, it's going to be Panther ball after Sellers knocked it out. Shayla Sellers doing a nice job on the inside, denying a couple of Panther attempts. 7.31, left here in the fourth, 18 of the shot clock inbound here for Angie Sierra, lob goes to Megan Wallstad. To her left, now spins to the painted area, falling down did stop, and the attempt by Walsh to flex off the bottom of the rim, knocked out by Sellers. Out of bounds, Panthers keep it with 20 on the shot clock and 7.26 now left in this fourth, a 51 43, eight point Milwaukee lead. Sierra lobs to Sydney Staver, and Staver over the right shoulder, leans before passing it off to Michaela Santoro. Santoro drills back out, now passing Michaela Schmelzer. Schmelzer picked up on by Riley Ott. Bounce pass goes to Staver. Back out, right wing spacing, three ball Santoro. Off the back rim, got tripped up by Starks. Gets back up, gets back to play defense. Back to the way comes Broman Schenkel. Riley Ott coming across the paint up the right side and trying to force a line drive layup attempt that got altered. She falls hard onto her backside, landed awkwardly and appears to be okay. Ball simply out of bounds to Purdue four wins. Emma Whitmerhouse will sub into the Panther five, but off the attack, bump it off. Michaela Santoro came over and altered the line drive layup attempt by Riley Ott. Ott now will throw it in. On the inbound with 20 on the shot clock. Launches it up top, picked off, and Santoro able to jump the pass intended for Amelia Broman Shankle, but it was underthrown. Whitmerhouse in replacing Sydney Staver in the Panther five. Schmelzer go to her left. Stop at the free throw line and passing to Angie Sierra in the corner. Angie Sierra back out with Morales left wing. She has a three ball in this game. Santoro with six and a half to go in the fourth. Eight point Panther lead. Shot clock down to five. Santoro spinning, passing up top. Wallstead, entry feed. Whitman Ross, right of the hoop. Her shot to put it off the bottom of the rim against three defenders. Handle for the board in the corner. And Starks gets tangled up by Angie Sierra. Jump ball, arrow with the Panthers. Back in for Purdue Fort Wayne. Ryan Ott along with Audra Emerson replacing Riley Ott and Solaire Starks. Inbound from the end line, that for Angie Sierra. Here is side of the hoop, close to the Panther bench to our right. Inbound, high hands for Amelia Bromenschenkel. Angie Sierra will launch it into the hands of Santoro baseline right on the attack. Stop, pulls up her floater, a little bit strong, rebound. Wallstead, left side, back out, Smelter, left wing, wide open, fires a three, it's good! Michaela Smelter off the second chance opportunity. First Panther field goal making the last six tries. Six nothing, Panther run right now, a two and a half minute, Purdue Fort Wayne, scoring drought. 54-43, Panthers biggest lead of the game at 11. 5.54 to go. Broman Schenkel, back into the corner. Ryan Ott. One up the right side against Whitmerhouse and too much body. That's going to be team foul three against Milwaukee. Whitmerhouse picking up what's going to be her second. And now Jaslyn Limbo playing with four personal fouls. Subs back in replacing Aubrey Stump. Panthers by 11. Looking to beat Purdue for Wade for a sixth consecutive meeting. Before these teams see each other to wrap up the regular season on the 26th of February in Indiana. Entry feed goes to Limbo. Baseline right, looking to back down. Wallstead into the paint, now spins. Up the right hand, blocked by Wallstead. Ball knocked out of bounds. Stage with the Mastodons. Trying to fake around Wallstead, able to match her. Shot clock reads 10, inbound here for Emerson. 
Back into the corner for Sellers. We're on the screen by Limbo. Right wing three ball. Count it. 5 3 for Sellers to match her season best. She has 19 points. She's 5 of 7 from beyond the arc. 54 46 Milwaukee. We're going to have three point shot keeping the Mastodons in most of their games this season. On the attack, Santoro stopping, passing. Sierra, left side, low block. Extra pass goes inside, walks it over a couple. Scores the bucket right side, plus the foul. Came off the bounce pass on the inside from Angie Sierra. Another three point opportunity for Megan Wallstad. Good shot fake by Wallstad. Got both Ryan Ott and Shayla Sellers to jump as they were coming down. Made contact with Wallstad who was going up. And the foul going against Shayla Sellers, her third. And team foul one. Free throw good. Three point play complete. Wallstad now with 11 points all here in the second half. She is now 2 of 8 from the field, 7 of 8 from the free throw line with 6 rebounds. Stellers up the right side, throws up a floater, comes up short. And the rebound tracked down by Schmelzer on the push. Panthers up by 11. Knocked away on the backside from Schmelzer, recovered by Grace Crowley, who is subbing into the Milwaukee lineup. Santoro inside, left side, low block. Wallstead throws double and playing her first game since the 30th of December. Just her second appearance of the last six games played. And the free throw, good, she's three for three at the free throw line this season. 60, 46. Panthers up 14, their biggest lead of the night. 4.15 left here in the fourth. Limbo on the bounce pass. And Riley Ott into the paint, and a foul here against the Panthers. It's gonna be team foul four. That's gonna go against Michaela Santoro. Another six nothing Panther run. They've knocked down their last three field goal attempts. Inbound goes to Broman Schenkel. Goes to her right, passes the back up high to Sellers. Into the hands of Riley out to her right, right back to Sellers. She'll, she'll launch another three ball, and it's good again. Six threes, eight tries, she has 22. One shy of her high at 23. 60 to 49, Panthers by 11. Eight threes now for the Mastodons. Panthers also have hit eight threes to match their season best. In fact, eight threes in two of the last three games. Schmelzer to Grace Crowley, left side corner. Crowley attacking, passing. Santoro, ball fake and drive. Stopping right of the lane, back out. Whitmerhouse, right wing, fire a long two. Off the mark, rebound, Wallstad. Then lost, able to recover against Ott. And try to pass it back out, deflected by Linbo and recovered here by Broman Schenkel on the Purdue Fort Wayne takeaway. Sellers attacking again, will pass it back out. Broman Schenkel, wide open, fires a three. And can I get the bounce rebound from Michaela Santoro? And for Broman Schenkel, it's her first three point miss in three tries. Schmelzer taking the baseline and got bumped as she was taking it baseline left. 3 0 6 left here in the fourth. 60 49. Panthers lead by 11. As Kendall needed, Angie Sierra sub in. Foul goes against Audra Emerson, her third. Team foul three. And Starks will sub in for the Mastodons, replacing Emerson. Panther inbound here for Angie Sierra. 22 on the shot clock, and number 22 will inbound. Going back door, right side. Schmelzer back out, Whitmerhouse swings up top. Wallstad back to Schmelzer outside the midcourt circle. Defense by Riley Ott. Schmelzer to her left around the screen, set by Need, passing to Wallstad. Inside Need and turned into a series and a trio of Mastodons. Takeaway here, now Starks into the front court for Purdue Fort Wayne. Right side low block with an offensive foul pushed off and taking the hit, Michaela Schmelzer. Got knocked down offensive foul, Solaire Starks. That's her second and team foul four. And Starks with attacking, used the off arm to create some separation and pushed off on Michaela Schmelzer trying to front and slow down Starks. Now the press on for Purdue, Fort Wayne. Whitmer House into the hands of Schmelzer ahead to Kendall Need. Two on one, Need will slow it down into the corner. Right back out to Schmelzer. Two and a half to go. Need into the paint, threw up a running one-hander and walked with the basketball on her path to the lane. Too many turnovers tonight. That being number 22. So the Panthers, another 20 plus turnovers after doing a great job of taking care of the ball on the road in a couple of games last week. In fact, they had a total of 24 turnovers in those two games combined. And now a foul here against Milwaukee off the attack next to the rack by Riley Ott. 
Foul goes against Emma Whitmerhouse. That's going to be her third and team foul five. So Ott to the free throw after Wallstead came over to help out Whitmerhouse. Those two try to slow down the attacking Ott, who in this game has gone one of three uncharacteristically from the free throw line. Sydney Staver and Michaela Santoro each back into the Panthers lineup. And out goes Kendall Need and Angie Sierra. So a couple of free throws here for Ott. First down the way is good. And Purdue four away now four of six at the charity stripe. One more coming up. 2.17 left. Panthers up by 10. On its way, count it. And Ott quickly up to nine points in the game. Back on the inbound, Staver press on for Purdue, Fort Wayne ball, knocked to the bounce, last touch by Riley out after a near Panther turnover. Their inbound coming up. But again, this for the Panthers, as mentioned, another 20 plus turnover performance, trying to take better care of the ball. Into the front court comes Michaela Santoro. Fifth time they've had 20 or more turnovers in the game. But up nine, despite the turnover stat. Now trying to end a scoring drought of over two minutes. Staver, left wing, up top, Michaela Schmelzer. Shot clock is at six. Schmelzer with four, with three, bounce pass, Whitmerhouse up the right side and fouled with one of the shot clock. If it's against Limbo, it's gonna be her fifth. And it is. That's her fifth, she's disqualified for the second time this season and being replaced by Emerson in the Purdue Fort Wayne lineup. So Limbo is done. A high of nine rebounds, her high this season. Scored six points on three of seven shooting. At the line is Whitmer House, so both teams are the bonus. And the first free throw for Whitmer House is good, she is in this game, two for three from the free throw is nine points with a couple of rebounds. Looking for a second consecutive double figure scoring performance after scoring 12 on Saturday against IUPUI. Next free throw on the way, good, and so she is in double figures. That for the fourth time this season, the timeout for Purdue Fort Wayne. With 1.47 to go, it's gonna be a 30 second timeout. Panthers up 62, 51. After this, Panthers We'll take on Cleveland State on Sunday at 2 o'clock tip here in Milwaukee. That's a Cleveland State team that is 9-3. They've lost three in a row. A couple of forfeit wins over Wright State and IUPUI. Those programs were battling COVID. But Cleveland State has not played since January 1st. Well rested. They lost at Youngstown State that day. Their last three games were all canceled. No contest, including tonight at Green Bay. Cleveland State team, WBI champions last season, led by a sophomore, Destiny Leo. Did great things, their second go around after being the Rider League Sixth Player of the Year last year is right now top of the league in separate nation at 22.1 points a game. In fact, Purdue Fort Wayne, their next game is against Cleveland State as well in Cleveland on Thursday as Purdue Fort Wayne's game at Green Bay on Sunday canceled. Inbound here now for Riley Ott. And it goes to Emerson. Angie Sear out there with Santoro, Wallstad, Staver, and Schmelzer. Emerson are right around the screen set by Starks. At the wing, quick hand, Santoro. Pass goes to Sellers. Sellers going left. Now passes it off. Three ball, Emerson. No good. It's short rebound. Wallstad, she brings down her eighth board. Wallstad with 11 points as well. Will pass it across the way. Schmelzer gets across midcourt. Just in the nick of time. And Schmelzer passes it off to Staver. 1.18 to go here in the fourth. 11 point Panther lead. Schmelzer, now to her right, and Stark jumps out after she had that monster second half against Oakland last time the Panthers were here back on December 30th. Both free throws fall on a timeout for Purdue Fort Wayne with 1.11 to go. 64 51, Panthers up by 13 on the verge of a sixth straight win over Purdue Fort Wayne and about to improve the 6 0 at home all time against the Mastodons. Again, these teams will see each other to wrap up the regular season in Indiana. It's senior day for the Mastodons on the 26th of February. 1-11 to go. Purdue Fort Wayne down to one timeout remaining. Panthers have four left. Both teams are in the bonus and the possession arrow with the Mastodons. A couple of finals already around the Horizon League. The other games, IUPUI getting Macy Williams back, although she came off the bench, knocking off Robert Moore at 63-44. And Youngstown State improves to 9-0 in league play. They beat UIC 
69-46. Inbound goes to Emerson. Bring the ball up the floor for Purdue Fort Wayne. Going right. Driving kick in the corner. Ott for three in front of the Mastodon's bench. Missed it. Did Riley Ott. Rebound for Angie Sierra. Ahead to Michaela Santoro. Around Sellers. Into the front court. And Santoro will drill back out. Passing it outside the midcourt circle to Smeltzer. 50 seconds left. Smeltzer. Picked up on now by Amelia Bromenschenkel. Going right. Stopping and passing it back out to Smeltzer to Staver. Shot clock at seven. Staver left wing. Goes back to her right. Staver against Riley Ott. And before she gets a shot from the left elbow, draws a foul against Riley Ott with three seconds on the shot clock. It's going to be an arm bar against Riley Ott. And that's going to be her third. A couple of free throws going up here for Cindy Staver, who has not scored since knocking down three first half threes. She has nine points. I'm not even sure if she's attempted a shot here in the second half. As Staver's first free throw is good. She's taking two shots. One more coming up here for the uh, grad student, shooting 82% from the charity stripe. Fourth Panther in double figures. Her next free throw stays down, gives her 11. 66-51 Panthers. They've outscored Purdue Fort Wayne 18 to 12 here in the fourth. Back up high, ball being worked over to Sellers, right side, into the corner, up top. Ryan Ott fires a three, hits it. That's her first three point make since November 24th. She had missed her last 13 threes. 66-54. Angie Sierra over, lost it, steals Sellers, left hand lap banks in. Inbound in front of us for Michaela Santoro, 10.9 seconds to go. Panthers up by 10. And on the inbound, it goes to Wallstad, right side corner. Right back out, Santoro, the puck, the pass, able to recover. Looks to dribble back out, and with the pass it back out, and before she could do so, a foul here against the Mastodons. 5.3 seconds left. Just a matter of what the final will be. This foul going against Audra Emerson is going to be her fourth. And so a couple of free throws here for Michaela Santoro. 75% free throw shooter first down the way is good. Panthers 21 to 24 from the free throw line in this game. So trying to get back to the free throw line, doing just that in this contest. Not sure the Panthers took 24 free throws in the two games combined last weekend. Both free throws go for Santoro. Final five seconds up the sideline. Emerson, right wing, stopping, launching the three ball at the buzzer.